Hi, this is Tony Mormino with Insight Partners. And in this really short video, I'm gonna talk about using AOM rooftop units in low dew point applications. So what do we mean by low dew point? So we'll take a look at this psychometric chart here. And me personally, I kind of cut off low dew point at uh, 55 degrees. So anything, and this we're talking about the space design conditions. So anything above 55 degree dew point, you know, Standard DX equipment will get you there most of the time. Um, when we look at low dew point, at least in the world of using AON type specialty DX equipment, it's usually down to about 42 degree dew point. That's really about the cutoff that I like to think of that as. So in this area, 42 degree dew point to 55 degree dew point, we're in a specialty DX type of equipment, which AON certainly falls under that. Anything below that, you're probably looking at like a glycol, um, low temp glycol system or an active desiccant system. So what is specialty DX? In my terms, and uh, after doing this for 20 years, the way I look at specialty DX is a piece of equipment that's designed to control the space temperature and humidity, typically low dew point humidity, over all design conditions and do that very effectively, do that efficiently, and do that uh, very precisely. So that's how I define specialty DX. So what you need to have in a rooftop unit that needs to do that is a wide range and the components that can go from a very low part load up to a very high full load, sometimes down to 10% of the unit capacity. So if you had a 10 ton unit, it needs to go from maybe one ton up to 10 tons. And not a lot of units are built that can do that. And the way we do that is with modulation. So all the components that we can in the unit that we can make modulating, we have modulating for these specialty DX types of applications. And you can see this photo here, the background is, is a operating room because that's one of the low dew point applications we can do with package DX equipment. So I'll just go through some of the features and this is a very just kind of high level overview of the components required to make this kind of stuff happen. Um, so you definitely want to be able to modulate your cooling. So a digital compressor or a VFD driven compressor, some sort of modulating compressor is an absolute must. On your heating side, and this would be your primary heat, like your gas heat, electric heat, or hot water heat, you definitely want to be able to modulate that and have a very high turndown. That's important when you're talking about precise and or low dew point control. Modulating hot gas reheat is essential. And there's a whole presentation I do on that and I'll tell you how to get to that after this uh, presentation. Uh, but that's used in dehumidification mode to reheat the air. Hot gas bypass is something you probably wanna have. It, it, it's one of those it depends scenarios. Uh, for freeze protection at extremely low conditions, like maybe lower than 10% of your full load design. Sometimes you wanna do simultaneous heating and cooling, which provides you backup electric heat to your modulating hot gas reheat if there's times during the day or the low profile that you just can't get there. It's extremely rare, but it does happen sometimes. And we recommend doing simultaneous heating and cooling only as an emergency basis in specific applications. It's a good idea to have a variable speed supply fan. It's a good idea to have variable speed condenser fans for variable head pressure control. Um, if you're in an application that requires, you know, like a surgery suite or something like that, that's very um, sensitive to any type of bacteria or virus, UV lights are a great idea. HEPA filters are a good idea in those applications as well. Um, you want to make sure you have a high static fan if you're going to put a HEPA filter in a packaged piece of uh, AON equipment. And then, of course, the application-specific controller that's designed to put all this stuff together and control your design objective. So that's a very quick overview. If you need more information, go to my new website called hvacwebinars.com. There you can sign up for my latest full-length webinar. You can see all my past webinars. I have a bunch of short training videos like this. You can also reach out to me over email. 
which is on hvacwebinars.com. My phone number is out there. Any application questions, uh, reach out to me anytime and come check it out. Hope to see you there.